my name is Michael Shanks from Northern Ireland. I am the owner of Trouvé number 31. Well, uh, we've camped as a family, at least I did as a, a child for years, and my parents had a touring caravan, and then we moved on to camping as a family with our kids and had a trailer tent and then a folding camper and then a very small, when the kids grew up a bit, a very small touring caravan, 20 years old, but it was great crack. And we had weekends with friends who had a camper van and they recommended it and said they'd had it all their lives and said, and it's wonderful, you would really enjoy it. So we looked into it and this friend with the camper van, Richard, um, said, I've just seen this van. If we didn't have our VW, uh, this is what I would be looking at and I think it might suit you. It's called Orange Campers. It's in the Motorhome magazine. So he gave me the magazine. I had a look at it and I thought, well, that seems to... I daren't say tick all the boxes because I've been given terrible abuse for having said that on the TV program. Um, but it did tick all the boxes. It seemed to be slightly bigger than the VW, but not as big as a uh, high top. So um, we fancied the idea and arranged to go over to Orange Campers because that was the first one we'd seen. But we're very aware that it may not have been what we what we would ultimately want. So... We scooted over from Northern Ireland and uh, organised a weekend, booked in to see um, Sonia and Richard. And uh, in the interim, popped around a few other camper van companies um, to see Ford Transits. We'd already decided that our friend's VW um, was just too small, um, couldn't, it was too, felt it was claustrophobic for us. Um, and wanted a bit more space, but then the compromise is how big the the van is for getting about. And if you live in Ireland, there's an awful lot of small roads in Ireland that um, you, you don't want too big a van on, being honest. So we went and saw the Ford Transits, and they were no bigger. Well, they were slightly bigger, but they were still too small, and the finish was really ropey in some of them, and big names. I won't mention the big names, but... Uh, the finish was severely dodgy, rough edges on uh, bare wood. Uh, it just wasn't very good. So we went up to Orange Campers and it was the right size. It was big enough, but not too big. It was a bit of a Goldilocks. It was just right after the, the uh, other two. And um, Rich and Sonia were very helpful. They gave us lots of time in the afternoon. We had a test drive and they chatted all about the possibilities and uh, the options that we could go for. Um, we decided to order up a, a particular spec of van. Um, and that, unfortunately, that was with COVID and it was problematic. Um, and it didn't arrive. Uh, I don't think it's ever arrived. So in the end, Sonia and Rich helped us out and said, we've kept the van back because you've been waiting so long. By this stage, it was quite, it was about, eight, well, about a year. And if you want to go for this one, it's a different color, but largely it's the same spec. And so they were extremely helpful um, in that respect, keeping me straight. Um, I tend to panic a lot when I don't know exactly what's going on and being in Northern Ireland and uh, not connected and not able to drop up um, easily. Um, it was very uh, reassuring to have Sonia on the end of the email uh, responding so quickly whenever I had any queries. Um, so it turned out to be the van for us, but even then there were some hiccups. There were some things that we weren't 100% sure about, like the height of the seats when the swivel seats are on and you swivel it around. Ruth's legs were dangling um, in the front. And she's not tiny, but mine would be slightly dangly too. And um, suggest there's a, is there any way we could get something like a little step that you could support your feet with, you know, just something to put your feet on, like a footrest that folded away. So he said, Rich said, oh, and I haven't thought about that, but that, that'd be great. Oh, that's a good idea. We'll look into that. I'm sure we can work something out for that. And a couple of other bits and bobs, we said, you know, what about this? What about that? And he said, yeah, yeah, that all seems fine. And then we had our choices to make. And Sonia again sent us the choices, which I worked out being a sad mathematician, type, well, scientist. There were something like 47 million com combinations of all the finishes for all the surfaces. And um, in the end, it did come down to 
not too many and we made our choices eventually and uh, we're very pleased with them and Sonia talked us through and there were some changes then as, as time went, went by prices of wood with Brexit went up um, and the supply chains were dodgy so we made a few changes along the way but she kept us informed about those at all stages and uh, talked us through them and we, by the time we'd made our decisions that we were we'd made a good decision well since we've got the van um, it's I can look at it now. I'm seeing it through the kitchen window. It's um, parked on the driveway, and I'm constantly fiddling with it. I have to say, nipping in and out, tweaking little plastic boxes to fit under the seats, and putting little hooks in here, there, and everywhere. So we had a a break at half term there in February. We both managed to get away. And being in the west of Ireland, we're used to the weather being grim, and it was it lived up to its. Um, it was pretty grim, windy and wet, but the van was perfect and driving along the small roads was no big deal. Um, the van, while being slightly wider than the VW, is only slightly wider and it was, uh, I won't say a breeze, but it was pretty much a breeze. Ruth drove it a lot and was very happy with it. Um, just learning how to work anything new, all the ins and outs of all the electrics and the settings for the radios and the phone and all that sort of stuff and the Bluetooth just takes time. Um, but the van itself is very simple and the instructions you get with it are very clear. So have the heating going, um, the fridge working a treat, uh, everything was just fine and dandy. Um, so we had a great time out there and uh, even le learning to level up with ramps. One or two of the, the sites were a bit uneven, so we got the ramps out and uh, it's very easy to, to get used to. So we were very pleased with the break we had. Um, I had it off the other, well, two days ago, I had it off, um, just drove off into the sunset, as it were, and parked up beside the sea and was marking a bundle of GCSE uh, calculation <laughs> tests uh, from a chemistry class. So um, that was a really nice thing to do. It was just nice to sit out there and do it, looking at the sea and not be disturbed by anything, not be tempted to go and watch the TV. That was great. Um, and then our plans, once I retire in June... We're going to be over at the Great North Run in Newcastle at the start of September. So we decided we'd hop on from there to Holland and then get a ferry up to uh, Christiansand in Norway and drive around southern Norway up as far as Bergen and then probably across Oslo unless we stay in Norway for a bit longer. Uh, but if we don't, down to Oslo and then probably down through Sweden and down to Malmo and across Copenhagen and back to Newcastle. So we're giving ourselves three weeks of travelling then. So um, at the moment, it pl is a big part of our future. Um, and we take a lot on shorter trips anyway at the weekends with friends in Northern Ireland here. Um, so fully in expect to do that a bit more and tootle around Ireland a bit more as well because it's a wonderful place and you should all come and see it except for the fact that the ferry is so blinking expensive but apart from that it's a wonderful place.